Hi, and welcome to our first video in a three-part series on the post-COVID consumer. I'm Jessica Lipley, Marketing Coordinator here at SenseSource, and I'm joined by Andy Clutter, our Marketing Director. Hey, Andy. Hey, Jess. How's it going? Good. Um, today, we're going to discuss uh, how the pandemic has changed shoppers' behaviors and which of those behaviors are likely going to last into the future. Look back 12 months ago. Hardly anything looks the same as it did then. The way we work, the way we learn, the way we celebrate. The pandemic has altered shopping habits too, and some of these changes might be permanent. The post-COVID consumer, someone worth counting. So historically, retailers knew their shoppers' behaviors. It was very predictable. You knew the times, the hours of the day that shoppers would come, peak seasons. It was all very routine. And I'm sure you can think back on your own shopping experiences and think of how consistent those were. Obviously, when the pandemic hit, our shopping um, habits had to change. Stores that were labeled as not essential had to close their doors and we had to learn new ways to go about getting what we needed. And Andy, you do a lot of the grocery shopping for your family. Um, so just tell us a little bit about how that shopping had changed on the on with the onset of the pandemic. Yeah, so I do a lot of the grocery shopping for the family. Uh, it's something I've always done even before we had uh, kids at home, but it's just something I enjoy doing and I do a lot of the cooking as well. So I know what I'm looking for. Um, so it's, it's, it's just something that we do, but I, the biggest change I would say is before the pandemic, grocery shopping was a family outing. We would go, we'd have lunch, we would take our time going through the store, and, uh, and we, we would just load up the car with everybody. That has significantly changed. Now uh, it's a one-man show. I go on my own, I get in and out. Uh, I would say behaviors and buying habits have changed specifically when it came to grocery shopping. Right. And so we are located in Ohio, so our experiences may be a little bit different than yours, depending on where you are, our viewers here. Um, but Andy, did you come across uh, a lot of stores that had occupancy limits? Yeah, there were. There were quite a bit of, uh, of stores that were monitoring occupancy, keeping, keeping their eye on it, whether it was uh, an employee sitting at the front with pen and paper, just keeping track of how many people were coming and going, or if it was some type of uh, just guideline. Uh, my particular grocery store, for example, had a number on the door and said, you cannot exceed this number of people in the store, but it didn't really seem like there was anybody actively controlling it. Even down this far down the road, I think a lot of people are still trying to avoid the crowds. Um, they don't want to go into a crowded store right now. Um, and with that, um, the social distancing and the cleaning and knowing that shoppers' behaviors have changed, um, the retailer had to react. Their routines had to change as well uh, to make the customer feel welcome and invited and safe. Um, so Andy, what are your thoughts on that struggle that uh, businesses are dealing with right now? Yeah, and businesses are they're relearning their customers' habits on the fly. And, and what we've noticed, particularly in the retail segment, is habits are always changing, always evolving, but a lot of that takes time. It, it's, it, it takes years and decades for those habits to emerge. And, and what we're seeing are dramatic shifts in, in shopping habits in the last 12 months. And what we've seen historically is uh, businesses rely a lot on point of sale data. Uh, to learn what their customers are doing, what they're buying. And then also businesses rely on foot traffic data. And those are two independent data streams that are, are kind of siloed, I guess. So you could look at either one of those data streams and, and learn something from it about your customers. But when you combine those two streams of data, it, it really helps you learn and identify habits much quicker. So we talked about a little. We talked a little bit about these changing behaviors, um, but which of these do you think are going to kind of fade away, and which of these do you think are going to uh, stick with us into the future? Yeah, a lot of things that have emerged over the last six to twelve months are definitely here to stay. I think things like curbside pickup, delivery services, those things are are, are going to be around now, and I, that's not a bad thing for retailers. It's just a different way to win some business. But now there's a different battle to be won of hey, let's make our services the best that they can be. And I think that uh, customer loyalty is gonna be a battle 
whether it's in the store or through these services, that it's stronger than ever before. Yeah, definitely. Um, regardless of the, the changing in the behaviors, a shopper always wants the best service and the best customer service that they can get. Absolutely. Um, and according to a report that we had found from TalkDeck Research, it did say that the post-COVID shoppers' customer service expectations are higher than they were a year ago. Um, and so in episode three of our series here, we will um, talk with our customer support manager, uh, Dan Bricker, and, and we'll kind of discuss how those higher expectations are being met here at Sensource, as well as our customers beating their end customers' um, expectations as well. In our next episode, we'll discuss the new industries that came about here at SenseSource because of the pandemic. And we'll be joined by our general manager, Dan Aloise, as well as our director of software engineering, Jeremy Forsyth. Thanks, Sandy, for joining us here today. Thanks, Jessica. I appreciate it. Right. And thank you for joining us here for our first episode in the three-part series.